thought I'd just give you a quick view inside um, Franken Drum, as I'm now calling it, because I've hacked this thing so badly. There's not a lot that's actually driven from here anymore. Um, but it's the, the PLC, he's driving it, and it's all relays and heavy contactors in there. And this relay here is what does the water top up. Um, and because I've built it into an enclosure now, I'm just leading some of the functionality out separate wires into the log cabin because I can't get to this now um, and, uh, and I've kind of come to the conclusion that it's so um, old and difficult to interface with that it's easier to build on top of it and just have other logic controlling it so that's what I'm doing. So this is inside this is inside the control box in the log cabin a lot of wires coming through now. Um, this is the temperature heat controller. This switch now will do manual flush on the drum. And then up here I've got the, uh, what is the error light. And the reason I've brought those two through, um, other than the fact that I can't get to them very easily in the um, enclosure now, is that I want to be able to hook them up to this logic controller here, which has also got a radio module on it, so um, which hooks up to the internet. So in theory, if the drum error is out, I want it to be able to tell me it has, because it will have cut the pump, and as what happened yesterday is also cut the heater, because there was no flow going through it, um, so the temperature dropped and um, the flow stopped and I don't know how long it was like that for um, I was out all day <clears throat> so I want to be able to tell it's happened and by remotely tripping the manual button it resets it um, so I want to be able to do that remotely so that's the idea so this um, this logic board which is an ESP32 uh, Laura module, Helltech I think it is, uh, it's the brand, uh, also has a battery backup and charging facility which is useful for this because it means that if the power goes out the board will continue and I will be able to get sent the signal to say the power's gone out, pond is down. So this is um, it's a LiPo cell that I've got, it's a, I think it's an 850 milliamp power cell. Uh, which will last ages on that board. Um, didn't have the right connector on, so I've had to take that off, and I'm going to have to add a, a new GST connector to it, like that. Uh, and so I'm just going to um, sort that out, put some heat shrink over it, um, so it doesn't short out, and um, yeah, we'll get back to you in a second. So I've um, stripped the ends of the wire on the battery. Um, I'm now just going to uh, tin the ends with solder and then so I'll make it join that. I have already put the shrink sleeve over the end. Um, that's a mistake I've made more times than I care to mention. You go to then put it on and <laughs> you've soldered it up and there's no shrink, shrink uh, sleeve on it. If I just tin these wires up first, it'll be a lot easier when I come to sort of put the other wires to it. And the same with this actually, I'll just tin these up.
just pull the shrink sleeving up. Well, this is a hot air gun. And you just hit it with a bit of hot air to shrink it. Here we go, so there's my new battery with the, you can't see that, I won't focus on that, but it's tiny, tiny little connector on it, and I can just plug that into the back of the board now and that gives me battery backup. Now because um, my uh, logic controller takes 3.3 uh, uh, volts and that um, error indicator is 24 volts I'm going to use one of the relays that I had in the spare the spare box uh, this is a 24 volt relay um, and what I'll do is I'll put the the coil parallel parallel to the um, indicator so when the indicator comes on it also flips the coil on this which will connect these two contacts here and those two contacts is what will be led back to the logic controller. So I will um, pull a pin up in software and then when this trips it will short the pin to ground so it will drop it logic zero uh, and then that gives me something that I can check in my code at whether that's an error state or not. I hope that makes sense. Right, so this um, box on the outside of the log cabin is where all the wires run through. It's just a way of sort of terminating them and um, getting them through into the other side. Um, but because I'm short of space on the other side, I've put the relay here. So I've run the wire around in, which strips the coil, and then back through to the other side where my logic signal can pick it up. So there's that all buttoned up, sealed up, and you see. It's quite a lot of wires running around, around here now, um, but it's all good. And I've got to, um, to put my aerial up on here as well. So that just comes in through from there. Let's see that for the time being. So here it is um, showing an error state, the lights on. To uh, reset it, I just have to hit the manual wash button and you can hear it washing outside and that just takes the error away. Right, so here's the code that runs on the microprocessor, getting all the different temperatures from the different temperature sensors uh, through. And then here is our error state. So basically it's reading off the pin. If the pin is low, then it's an error state. If it's high, it's not an error state. So it then just prints it, no error or error state. And then also puts a different... Um, different part of the data stream to one or two depending if it is or isn't an error and I had loads of problems getting this digital read and the pin to work uh, on pin 33 and sometimes with these microprocessors where they use multiple functions on the same pin it's you know if you've messed around with it for a while and you cannot get it to work and I looked up all the pin outs for it there was no reason why it shouldn't work in the end I just moved it by one pin started working perfectly so you know um that's a bit of a tip if you just can't work it out just move it to a different pin and try that um but here you can see the serial window and you can see that it's reading the inside temperature outside temperature the different levels throughout the pond whether there's an error on the rdf or not and then it queues a packet up to be sent over the laura gateway uh the laura back to a LoRa gateway which goes onto the internet. So you can see here the last line, it's actually transmitted all those details away. And then here, this is the Things Network console. So um, for my application, New Pond, and here's the data stream that's coming in and that's all this, the, the temperatures and um, different settings. Now I need to correct this 
Um, I need to correct the um, integration on it uh, because it's not interpreting it right at the moment because I had pH and everything on there. Um, so the, here's the payload formatter is what I mean. I need to um, adjust this to make sure that the right byte is uh, telling me the right thing. Um, but yeah, the data comes in every 30 seconds um, and then I can take this from here and I can graph the temperatures um, or I can um, uh, I can get it to send me a text message uh, or a tweet or something of that nature to tell me that um, parameters are out of kilter or that there's an error state. And what I'd like to do eventually, and I would have been able to do today if I could have found um, the right breakout board that I know I've got somewhere, but you can never find it when you need it, is um, you can also do a downlink with this as well. So I can, from a web interface, I could queue a message to go back down to the controller to trigger a manual wash, which would then take it back out of our error state. So if there was something going on um, and it was, it looks like it could have resolved itself remotely, I could reset it to see if it would then work again. Um, same for um, the top up, water top up feature. So again, if something's gone badly wrong um, with that breakout board and wired into this, I should be able to send a message down to it um, from anywhere to say, um, put the water on. Um, so I suppose that'd be quite handy in a leak situation. Um, but there you go, so that's what we've we've got up to so far. I've got the data on whether there's an error on the RDF to the net, and now I need to work out what to do with it from here. So there you go. Thanks for watching.